Hi there. Okay, so we're on to metabolic pathways, which is key area six. Miss Armstrong is unavailable today, so it's just going to be stuck with me, I'm afraid. Now, metabolic pathways is an important key area for two reasons. Number one is it's quite a large one. It's likely to be asked about in the uh, exam when they're doing practical questions. And number two, a lot of you will be covering this area in your assignment. Uh, so we're going to start off with the different types of pathways and then we'll move into enzymes and then factors affecting enzymes. So this video here is all about pathways. So a metabolic pathway is the name given to a series of reactions that occur within a cell. So this is any reaction that's got more than one step to it that might need more than one enzyme. It's got stages in between the starting with the main raw material and finishing with the final product. So respiration, um, so aerobic and uh, non like fermentation they are both examples of metabolic pathways along with protein synthesis so chaining amino acids together and photosynthesis um, they are all examples of metabolic pathways because they have more than one step they're controlled by the presence or absence of specific enzymes uh, so what this means is the idea is if you want the pathway continuing the enzyme will be around. If you don't need it at that particular time, that enzyme will not be there. So for example, we've got here, when insulin synthesis is required, insulin building enzyme will be there. But if insulin doesn't need to be made, the enzyme will not be present, so you will not get insulin produced, okay? Um, now, you should know this from National 5 already, the idea that respiration is controlled by enzymes, photosynthesis is controlled by enzymes, most reactions in the body are controlled by enzymes, okay? So to control the rate of a metabolic pathway is absolutely crucial. If you think about yourself, if you were doing far too much respiration or not enough respiration, the impact on your body would be really, really bad. So there are reversible steps, irreversible steps and alternative routes. And what they do is they try and help to, in some cases, conserve cell resources and avoid overproduction of a particular product and in some cases as well what they do is they help to make sure that say you run out of a raw material that there's maybe an alternative raw material that you can use instead or say you've got one particular pathway that's completely overwhelmed that you could use an alternative route there an alternative pathway so that you don't end up with too much of build up of a particular thing. So let's look at reversible steps first. Reversible steps in a metabolic pathway help to prevent overproduction of a particular product. Okay. Now, in this example, we've got a reversible step between intermediate A and intermediate B. Now, you can tell it's reversible because the arrows go in both directions. There's one arrow going from A to B. There's another arrow going back from B to A. Now, this is controlled by enzyme 2. So enzyme two controls a reversible step of this chain of reactions. Now, the idea is we'd start with our substrate. We've got a bunch of things in between that we don't really need to know the names of or the idea of. And then we've got our final product, which we'd be interested in. OK, so that word intermediate, it just means thing that isn't quite the product yet. OK, it's not quite the raw material anymore, but it's not quite the product. So we call it an intermediate. It's a, a stepping stone of the, the metabolic pathway. So. In this example, a buildup or too much of intermediate B will cause some of it to be converted back to intermediate A, reducing the quantity that can be converted to intermediate C. And that prevents overproduction of that final product at this end step down at the bottom of the reaction there. OK, now that is useful because, again, if we're thinking that this is something like um, ATP production, too much ATP is really bad for your cells. You burn through your energy supplies too quickly. You're going to run out and you're going to die. OK, so being able to control this and have not too much, not too little is absolutely crucial, which leads us into um, non-reversible steps, irreversible steps. OK, irreversible steps help make sure that enough final product is actually produced. So in this example, again, on the picture, there are three irreversible steps in between the substrate and intermediate A, in between B and C, and then in between C and the final product. So these are all in irreversible steps that are there. So in this example, all of the substrate is converted to intermediate A, so it's ready for the next step. OK. Then if we skip to B and C, the idea is intermediate C can't be converted back to intermediate B. So this means intermediate C is always available for converting to the final product. Again, if we think about respiration as your example for this one. OK, so think about uh, the first step of respiration is a conversion of glucose as a substrate to pyruvate 
which is the final product, okay? If we run out of pyruvate, that is very, very bad for your cell. You need to make sure you have enough of it, okay? So we've got these irreversible steps to make sure that enough of this final product is actually produced. Exam questions about these types of things tend to be just being able to identify that's reversible, that's irreversible. The justification for them is a bit more, I've not really seen too many questions on that. Uh, so just being able to identify there's a reversible step, there's an irreversible step is, is a good start to this topic. Okay. So if we look at this as a specific example, now this uh, picture is showing the first step of respiration, the aerobic respiration, the conversion of glucose to pyruvate. Okay. Now all of these intermediates have been given their specific names, so glucose 6-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Okay. You don't need to know any of the names of these things. This is just examples. Now the idea is the reversible step at enzyme two is making sure that there's not too much ATP produced because that's bad for the cell. The irreversible steps at enzyme one, three and enzyme controlled steps, they are making sure that there's a constant supply of those products. And that's making sure that there's not too little ATP because as it states down at the bottom there, too little ATP equals death for the cell. So that is bad. So all of these reversible and irreversible steps are helping make sure there's not too much, not too little. We've got perfect Goldilocks type arrangement that's happening. Alternative routes are slightly different. A metabolic pathway may use an alternative route if there's a large supply of a particular metabolite. Now metabolite usually means breakdown product or thing that can be used in a metabolic pathway. OK, so it's anything. So that could be the original substrate at the very start. It could be any one of the intermediates. So if there's a buildup or too much of that thing in a metabolic pathway, we call that thing a metabolite. OK, and the idea is an alternative step, an alternative route might be able to be used to reduce the buildup very slightly. What we find in life is a buildup of too much of one thing can actually end up being kind of deadly. Uh, so that's not a good idea. Even things like amino acids can be potentially toxic if they build up too much. So we need a way to eliminate them, get rid of them as quickly as possible. Um, so uh, if the enzymes get overwhelmed in one particular pathway, so say enzyme one is completely overwhelmed with the amount of substrate that there is, there might be a different route using a different enzyme that converts the substrate to intermediate Z instead and then a bunch of other enzyme controlled steps, which means we skip the steps of A, B and C, but we still end up creating the final product. Now, all of that helps reduce the buildup of that particular metabolite, which might be potentially toxic. An example of this is um, alcohol digestion, or alcohol breakdown. Now, alcohol dehydrogenase is an enzyme that you find in your liver, and it's supposed to break down all the ethanol that's there, all of the alcohol that is there. OK, but when all of the enzyme molecules are occupied, because you don't have an unlimited supply of alcohol dehydrogenase, you've only got a limited amount. When all of those enzyme molecules get occupied, when you've got so much substrate that the enzymes can't deal with it, then a buildup of alcohol will occur in your tissues. And this is bad, potentially toxic, potentially deadly for your cells. So when this happens, a second enzyme can activate and that's called cytochrome P450. And what that will do is it's an alternative route that can metabolize alcohol. Now, seen in the diagram above, the normal route is the top route. So L ethanol to acetylaldehyde to alcohol dehydrogenase to acetate. OK, now this, the alternative route, the cytochrome P451, the lower route, it causes more tissue damage and endothelial damage than alcohol dehydrogenase. The reason for it is, is it actually creates a very similar compound to formaldehyde during its metabolic pathway. Now formaldehyde is a, a tissue preservative used if you want to preserve, I don't know, say a hand in a jar, random example, not from experience. Um, but say you wanted to preserve some tissue, you'd usually preserve it in formaldehyde. It has a tendency to suspend all normal cellular operation and prevent rotting because it kills bacteria like that. Now, the buildup of this in your tissues is obviously bad. So too much alcohol is essentially bad for you is the message that I'm trying to get across here because too much alcohol, alcohol dehydrogenase overwhelmed, cytochrome P450 kicks in, you start building up of other nasty things in your tissues and you end up damaging your tissues, which is not a good plan. So we're talking about message of moderation here to what your liver can actually cope with. Now, 
those three pathways, uh, that is the end of that little section on those. In terms of exam questions, again, just being able to identify an alternative route, a reversible step, an irreversible step, I think that's all that you would really be required to. There are two types of metabolic pathways uh, in terms of their categories. So we can have reversible, irreversible steps, alternative routes. But in terms of types of metabolic pathways, we're either talking about ones that build stuff up or ones that break stuff down. Now, in National 5, you learned that the enzymes that were involved were called degradation enzymes or synthesis enzymes. You need to get rid of those two words now, because now when we're talking about pathways, we're either talking about anabolic pathways or catabolic pathways. Now, essentially, one of those is synthesis, one of those is degradation, but there's also some stuff about energy that we need to be aware of. So an anabolic reaction, it builds larger molecules from smaller molecules. So it's going to connect stuff together and it's going to use energy to do this. Now, you already know most of this stuff. You know this idea of a synthesis reaction is smaller to bigger. And you already know that processes like protein synthesis, where you're building something, need energy. So all we're doing is we're giving it a proper name. We're categorizing it. Okay. So an anabolic reaction is small molecules connect together to large molecules needing energy in the form of usually ATP. A catabolic reaction breaks down large molecules into smaller molecules, okay? And this releases energy, as you can see from the diagram there. So the idea is we start with one big molecule and we end up with smaller molecules and energy as a side product of that, okay? Now, not every metabolic pathway is exclusively anabolic or catabolic. It can have anabolic stages and catabolic stages. Aerobic respiration is one of those stages that we actually look at where there's catabolic stages and anabolic stages happening. But overall, the process is catabolic because it breaks stuff down. It releases energy as a result. OK, so to summarize on your metabolic pathways, reversible steps help build, uh, help prevent too much build of a product. Irreversible steps ensure a continuous supply of raw materials in a metabolic pathway and alternative routes make sure essential metabolic pathway continues despite build up or to avoid build up of metabolites. Anabolic reactions are smaller molecules joined to larger molecules. Energy is required or used. An example, protein synthesis. OK, uh, in a catabolic reaction, <clears throat> excuse me, larger molecules are broken down into smaller molecules. Energy is released. And an example could be the catalase breakdown of hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. OK. Now, that's it in terms of pathways. The next video is looking at enzymes. And the crucial thing you need to try and get there is the difference in enzymes between national five and higher, because it's that kind of knowledge that you're going to need to include in your underlying biology for your assignment.